and down your hair. Listen to the music around the cafe on the square. People from all over will entertain you there. 217 Main Street, that's where you need to be. We're 93.9 and the list then is free. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, welcome to Sights and Sounds around the Barbecue Caboose Cafe. I'm Neil Gordon, your host, with uh, Ken Fly as well. Ken, how are you? Chris Gantry has just walked in. We're very excited to have him here tonight. How are you doing? Doing well tonight, Chris. So, uh, looking forward to a great show. Been reading up on your biography here. Man, what an impressive, impressive uh, career you've had. Well, you can't hear anything? Right like right there. There was. Okay, we're pretty good there. Oh, yeah. All right, well, we're going to turn. All right, we're good again. All right, well, uh, happy to have Chris Gantry with us tonight. We've got people following in here to the Barbecue Caboose Cafe. Uh, Ken, kind of tell everybody what's got going on here at the Caboose tonight. we got everything going on, but right here tonight we got a special evening. It's Valentine's Day, and I wish everybody a happy Valentine's Day. I know, happy Valentine's Day. And, uh... But we got uh, we got a lot of folks here, and they all some of them are chowing down on, on barbecue, and some of them are eating half half smoked chicken, and some of them are eating uh, jambalaya, I think. But it's uh, pulled pork. Okay, pulled pork. But we got a we got a good menu there, and uh, the food's good. If it's not good, you tell me about it. Don't tell anybody else here. But we're we're just tickled to be here, and and. Uh, Chris Gantry, as you said, <clears throat> I've tried to get him down here uh, several times, but we finally got him back to Lynchburg, and uh, now we're taking the death to see him. I, I said this evening, Chris, you're looking mighty good. I don't know why you took that, but don't tell nobody I said you're pretty or nothing. Well, I'm, I'm 73 years old. I've been stumbling through different doors my whole life. One door leads to another, and uh, here I am out on the other side. I've uh, been playing this guitar since I was 13 or 14 years old. I haven't stopped. And that's a good thing, but it's also led to problems in, in other areas. <laughs> Being, I've got some questionable lyrics that I want to ask you about. Questionable lyrics? Uh, not the ones that you've written, but the ones written about you there with oh. uh, Chris Christopherson. Oh. And, uh, I mean, let's, let's start talking some names here. Yes, Chris Christopherson, Glenn Campbell. Dolly Parton, Johnny Cash. I mean, the list goes on and on, my friend. Well, this was this was a, a career that I was I was lucky. I showed up in Nashville at the right place at the right time. Uh, guys like Shel Silverstein and Chris, they were young. They were in their early twenties. We all fell in with each other, and uh, nobody had any illusions about being. A star or fame or anything like that or making all kinds of money we just loved the idea of being in a place where you could be accepted for writing the kind of songs you were trying to write which was back in the early 60s at the Tarts beginning of the revolution. the revolution right right well uh, would you grace us with a song I will back in the old days the old outlaw movement was a, uh, the boys were wild. They'd pull into a motel and they'd throw the television set out the window into the pool and steal all the towels and run to the next gig. And they got a reputation for being wild boys. But the outlaw of today, 2015, is a benevolent creature. Uh, the outlaw boys that I know and the girls, Genevieve Allen, one, she's here with us tonight. Uh, we try to do things for people, and we try to help people, and this is this is the path of the new outlaw. So Great. that's what this song is about. Collecting money for the homeless vets 
black man who treats his animals like family, not his pets. That woman who's a helper to everyone she gives. Oh, in case you didn't know it, that's what outlaw is. That painter drawing pictures that beautifies the earth. Those songs of peace the writer writes and sings for all he's worth. Those teachers who devote their lives to working with the kids. Oh, in case you didn't know it, that's what outlaw is. Outlaw ain't about a fast draw, ain't about a gunfight. It's about living right, treating somebody else like you wanna be treated yourself. Works like a ripple effect, freedom something that we gotta protect. All of that bad boy, bad girl stuff we spout Put it in the trash bag, pull it all out We will meet one day on the rainbow bridge That's what outlaw is I had to be a taker To learn how to give back I had to drive right off a cliff to learn to keep on track. And if my misfortune show you there's a better way to live, well, in case you didn't know it, that's what outlaw is. Outlaw ain't about a fast draw, ain't about a gunfight. It's about living right, treating somebody else like you wanna be treated yourself. Like a ripple effect, freedom's something that we gotta protect. All of that bad boy, bad girl stuff we spout, put it in a trash bag, throw it all out. We will meet one day on the rainbow bridge. That's what outlaw is. Outlaw, it ain't about a fast draw. It ain't about a gunfight, it's about living right Treating somebody else like you want to be treated yourself Or looks like a ripple effect, freedom's something that we gotta protect Yeah, oh, that bad boy, bad boy stuff we spout Put it in the trash bag, throw it all out We will meet one day on the rainbow bridge That's what outlaw, that's what outlaw that's what our law is. 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 Yes, man. Yeah. And you can tell we're going to have us a fine time tonight. Yes, I'm telling you, I told you. They was worried about what we were going to do and how long we were going to be able to do this and if we could improvise and fill in. And I said, y'all ain't heard Chris Gantry. You don't know Chris Gantry like I do. Uh, he, he, you know, he's, I've known him for several years. He's put on a mighty good show. So we're taking all these hits. We're not, going, we're not worried about filling in and stuff. It's, not, it's okay, Chris. I'm going to change it out. Yeah, so go ahead and break a window. Break a leg? No, don't break a leg because that's going to get you out of here. Okay, Chris, uh, kind of, we're going to start in on the Chris Gantry story, if you will. Uh, it all starts a, a little above the Mason-Dixon line. You weren't born around these parts. I was born in Queens, New York, a place called Jamaica. I'm a real inner-city kid. I grew up with lots of people walking around outside, lots of buildings. Right down the street was the elevator line, the trains, and uh, I just, uh, you know... I used to dream about the. Here's what happened. Here's the deal. I tuned into a radio station one night. I, I heard a radio station from upstate New York, and they were playing Charlie Lubin, the Lubin Brothers. And when I heard them, I'd never heard music like that before in my life. That was the first country music I ever heard. And uh, it blew my mind. I couldn't believe that people sang like that or sang songs like that. Because I was used to New York. And it changed me. 
right on the spot. Uh, and the next record they played was a Bill Anderson song. So uh, I went down to the record store and started looking at the albums who wrote all these songs. And it was all the same people. Mel Tillis, Wayne Walker, Webb Pierce, uh, Willie Nelson. Uh, so when I finally got to Nashville, I met all those people and threw in with them. And they became friends. So, uh, now this was about what time? 1963, I read? It was, yeah, about 1962, 1963. But now you had been writing songs since the age of 14, correct? Well, I'd had a, a record deal with uh, ABC Paramount. Uh, I was in a group, I had a, it was like a group, it was, it was really a, a, a duo. We sounded kind of, we were imitating the Everly Brothers. And we, uh, we wrote teenage songs and they recorded them and they put them out. So I was like this little kid who was running down to the Brill Building on, uh, on, in New York and hanging out with other songwriters as a young kid. It's literally in the Brill Building. In the Brill Building, that's where it all was taking place. Wow, how cool is that? Uh, let's stop and uh, do another song if you will. <laughs> We've got a problem going on, folks. Um, this is really not a song to applaud or, or or get excited about, but this is this is a song about about those men that just got killed in Syria by ISIS. And I was trying to figure out what was in their minds right before they had to die. And uh, this is kind of what I came up with. I, I started thinking that they might have been thinking about their mothers. their blades to spill my blood at last oh mama you gave me my first breath now I'm about to be put to death oh mama wish I was far from here back home I swear I've never felt so alone Oh mama, I'm sorry Please don't cry for me I believe by coming here Others could be free Oh mama, just know What happens here today This is my higher calling God's own perfect way. Oh, Mama, my time is growing late. And you taught me to forgive all those who hate. Oh, Mama. Please don't let this steal your joy There's nothing that can separate A mother from a boy Oh mama, I'm sorry Please don't cry for me I believe by coming here Why others could be free Oh mama just know what happens here today. This is my higher calling in God's own perfect way.
going to, after that song, pause for just a moment. Uh, and we're going to a break. Ken, why don't you let folks know what's going on around the cafe, what we've got coming up in the very near future. What's going on around the cafe? In March the uh, 14th, I think, it's another, uh, the second Saturday of March, I believe it's the 14th, yes, we'll have Jim Parker. Jim Parker, a friend with Chris, and uh, they're, they're writers uh, together, and uh, he's from down in Huntsville. He'll be here, uh, he may have a guest with him, you never know, you never know about these kind of guys. They know so many powerful people and write such powerful stuff that uh, they'll all be followed by no telling who trying to learn some of their skills. So you never know who's going to be behind them. But anyway, Jim will be here. And uh, we're looking forward to that show. It'll be a good show. That's on, on February, uh, March the 14th. And if you probably, uh, good reservations is good. As you can see, we got a pretty good crowd here tonight. We can hang some people on some nails if we have them around here. But, you know, but uh, we got a good crowd. We're glad you all are here. <coughs> Looking forward to, uh, to what's going on. But now we're open every day. We're open every day from 11 till 4.30, 4 in the wintertime. time. But, uh, and serving barbecue every day. People ask us if we get in the contest. We do get in the contest. You people are our judges. You come in every day and judge our work. But uh, otherwise, my wife would say we don't have anything to prove, so we don't get in the regular contest. Well, we certainly appreciate Ken and uh, bringing this music to us. Ladies and gentlemen, right? Put our hands together one more time. Yeah. Ken Fox. We are here at the Barbecue Caboose Cafe live with Chris Gantry, who has written well in excess of a thousand songs. I read. Oh, God. Maybe, yeah. More. Yeah, maybe more. Maybe more. That's that's quite an impressive. Came to Nashville, 1963. First person you ran into? Billy Swan. Wow. Billy Swan. All right. Billy Swan, the man who I can help. And love it, please, by Clyde McFadden. Great songwriter, good friend, still. Still a great friend. Okay. I always like to ask this of my guests on the show that I do on Sunday nights back road. What was the first concert you ever attended as a fan? As a fan? Uh, actually, I was going to school in uh, McKenzie, Tennessee at Bethel College. I only lasted a few months there, but I hitchhiked into Nashville, went to the Grand Ole Opry, and the first person that I saw was Porter Wagner. Wow, that's pretty cool. <laughs> when I saw him in that suit, skinny as a pencil, hair piled up on his head, I said, I can do that. <laughs> <laughs> did you ever get a chance to tell Porter Wagner that yourself? I did, actually. That's yeah. pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's see. So you, you, you started in 63. You started songwriting. Uh, Tell us about some of those first adventures in the songwriting business in Nashville around that time. The first, the first, the first songs that I got cut were by guys like uh, Leroy Van Dyke, uh, uh, Justin Tubb, um, Jerry Guthrie, Woody Guthrie's nephew, Stan Hass. Uh, I, I was blessed because I was immediately thrown in with uh, Bucky Wilkin, who was little GTO, Chris Christopherson, who was trying to find his own style and his own voice, and uh, Shell had just come to town, and he was just a madman. He, he just being around him by osmosis, he picked up things, he learned things, and everybody was nobody ever slept. That's the thing. Nobody went to sleep. We stayed, we stayed up for three or four days at a time writing songs doing things, and fun, and then go to sleep, and get up again and do that, and we do that year after year after year, so you would, you would learn. It was, it, was, it was an apprenticeship, it was going to school. Could you maybe play us something from that era? I'll, I'll sing about what I was like in that era. Okay. <laughs> this is called Second Half First. It, wouldn't it be great if everything that we learned all our life the things that we've learned now, we could have done it up on the first part. Oh man. This is called the second half first. A 
unruly, angry, out of control. Words used to describe me at 20 years old. Morally bankrupt, loose cannon of such indecent, insane. Why are the boys out of touch? Through hard knocks in life, I found the right path. Loving my future, friendships that last. Most times things got better, less times things got worse. Oh, wish I had lived the second half first. Like clear skies are boring without a few clouds. Calm seas ain't exciting till the wind gets aroused. Freedom and peace wouldn't be what they're worth if the first half was last and the second half first. I hope heaven ain't some place to chill and relax. I wanna still feel the fire and wear different hats. Feeling the wonders of healthy mistakes that lead to the truth that is real and not fake. I brought the wine and you made the dinner. Let's eat and drink later. How's this for beginners? We go to the bedroom. Have a dessert and start this night off with the second half first. <laughs> Clear skies are boring without a few clouds. Calm seas ain't exciting till the wind gets aroused. Freedom and peace wouldn't be what they're worth if the first half was last and the second half first. guys about trying to get this show put together and they were wondering about Chris because they didn't know it, you know. they have been on the thing. And I said, look guys, Chris Gantry writes stuff that you got to hear twice to get. It's so deep. <laughs> and you know, you got to listen close and get it. There, he does the thing. I don't want to put him on the spot. I don't oh, know yeah. if you can do it or not. Did you do the tear? Uh, well, I haven't done it for a while. But well, I, I just, if you can do the tear, I would like for you to do the tear. This Okay, this, do, do I have to do it right now? Oh, no, no, okay. no, 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 no. Sometime tonight, if you'll do the tear, if you'll think about it. You know. But uh, it's amazing. Uh, some of the stuff he writes is, he don't just write songs, he writes some poetry. And uh, what about Robert Goulet? What'd you do for him? I mean, he's, everybody knows who he is. He wrote a song called, I mean, he sang a song called Good Friends. And then he also recorded Dreams of the Everyday Houses. Okay, so, you know, uh, when you're dealing with people like that will do that kind of music, you know what you do. Okay, well, you brought this subject up, Chris, so I'm going to follow up a little bit on that last song. Chris, Chris, Chris Christopherson wrote a song that he said was inspired by you. It's called The, uh, the Pilgrim. The Pilgrim, Chapter 33. When, uh, when he first, when he told me about the song and I first heard it, I was young. And it, it, I didn't like it because I thought that it was about a loser. And then as the years went on, I started to understand the song. And uh, it just, uh, I realized that we're all that person in that song. Sure, I think it speaks quite, I mean, it carries over the years. Do you mind if I read those lyrics? No, go ahead. By, referred to by Chris Christopherson. He's a poet. He's a picker. He's a prophet, he's a pusher, he's a pilgrim and a preacher, and a problem when he's stoned. He's a walking contradiction, partly truth and partly fiction, taking every wrong direction on his lonely way back home. Yeah, but there he is, and, and, and a living testament to uh, survival of that. Well, I tell you what, when we talk about home, first of all, when I see uh, Mindy and 
Jimmy and Joy, it feels like home because I spent a lot of years with these two folks singing a lot of music, playing all over the place, doing a lot of rehearsing at the Jimmy's Garage. We were known as the Mulberry Bunch, and uh, we had ourselves a good time. It was, it was hard, but it was a good time. And, uh, I love these, these people. They're, they're, they're my family, and uh, it's really great, great to see you all. It really is. Don't wave your hand here so everybody knows who he's talking about. <laughs> Jimmy and Joy, right here. There we go. Jimmy, right here. Little old lady, she used to go to the gigs all the time. She'd be sitting next to me in the back of the car. She'd be about this side, squirming around, <laughs> yelling. We'd be fighting. <laughs> it was fun. It was good stuff. Now modern, that is. It was good stuff. A good way to grow up. Amazingly, yeah. yes. The best. Fantastic. You know, Ken, you never know what you're going to get when you come here to no. the Barbecue Caboose Cafe. No, you don't. Uh, last week, we, or the last month, we had people out of the crowd get up and... and He's here again tonight. Yeah, yeah. did a fantastic job with Margaritaville with a it's member of the Coral Reefer right? Band. Yeah. Yes, and so you never know what you're going to get. Folks need to get out here, don't they? Yeah, yeah. We, had, we had Grissom here, the steel guitar player for, for uh, Jimmy Buffett. Jimmy Buffett, yeah. uh, playing steel. You never know. That was all, wasn't that great to get up and do Margaritaville with, with uh, Grissom? Yeah. Uh, I saw him 15 years ago. That was what was amazing at uh, Starwood, so pretty cool. Well, Chris? Give us another song, buddy, if you would. I'm going to try this song. This, this is one of these songs that I write where there's a chord change for every word. So if I can get through this, this will be good. But it's about little towns like this where it all looks to be one way and it's really another. It's called Little Town of Dreams. Jody yells out the back door, hey John, before you go, remember to get that wrench to fix the sink at the hardware store. Cross town waiting on a school bus, nearly holds a little boy's hand. It just started raining a moment ago when the bus is late again. Another day in the little town of dreams. UFOs and four-wheel Joes, homeboy limousines. Every night, everybody got a secret life. The moonshine here is cut with kerosene. In the little town of dreams, do ba ba da ba da di da da ba ba zu ra ba ba ba. Ba di di ba ba di da di da di da di da di da. Why my girl's daddy put a stop to us, but we sneak out at night. She tells her mama it's Bible study over to the Church of Christ. Why the preacher runs the pool hall and the sheriff's selling crack. Why mama runs the numbers and daddy runs the game out back. It's another day in the little town of dreams. Why UFOs and four-wheel Joes, homeboy limousines. There's two sides to every night. Everybody got a secret life. The moonshine here is cut with kerosene. In the little town of dreams. Ba 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 I don't want to go to work Cause the only thing I ever wanted to do was be Captain Kirk It's another day in the little town of dreams Why UFOs and four-wheel Joes on board limousines There's two sides to every night Everybody got a secret life The moonshine here is cut with kerosene In the little town of dreams that's hard. All right, we are here at the Sights and Sounds from the Barbecue Caboose Cafe, live here on 93.9 The Duck. And uh, 
joining us tonight, uh, one of my buddies from the Back Road Show, Chase. How are you tonight, Chase? Pretty Chase good. Clinton. Pretty good. What about you? Uh, having a pretty good night tonight, buddy? Yes, sir. Uh, this is our second show here, and it's uh, both have been very good so far, right? Sure has. Well, Chase, you know, tomorrow night we've got our big silly love song theme show, right? Uh-oh. Yeah, so if uh, you need to be thinking, if we have any people in the audience tonight that uh, can think of any silly love songs and want to recommend them to us, we'll be playing those on our show tomorrow night from 6 to 7.30, and we'll be talking about what it constitutes to make a silly love song. Chase, can you think of any? I think I know one in title silly love songs. Well, yeah, but let's don't go for the obvious. you have to dig a little deeper. But anyway, I guess we'll uh, join, go back to the stage here. And uh, Ken? Yeah. Very successful night, my friend. We've got a, a, a big crowd here. Oh, yeah. we got a bunch of smiling faces out here. Right, let me hear. Is that, how's the food? Anybody yeah. here? Yeah. Wow. I love that. Yeah. I love to hear that. Well, that's music to my ears. When they ring the bell. By the way, I want to say, <laughs> while Chris is up here, and we're kind of, kind of filling in here, uh, back there at the VIPA table is... Uh, some folks that's got some paraphernalia. Let's <laughs> 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 so, clear that up. Here. <laughs> so, uh, Chris, uh, no. Chris, would you tell us about the The first thing that's back there, I wrote a book called Dream, uh, Gypsy Dreamers in the Alley. It's the story of Nashville from 1963. To 1969, from the day I hit town to when things started to implode from all the craziness. But it's got the whole cast of characters in it, documented. It's a fun book. I've got a, a live CD called uh, Chris Gantry Live at the Filming Station. I've got children's books, three children's books, pictures. Uh, wallets. I've got some clothing here. <laughs> I've got some shoes in the car. We got everything. We're rocking here. We got the whole thing. Very That's good. That's how paraphernalia. Yeah. Paraphernalia. <laughs> I like that. Better work. Anyway, uh, it's, uh, it's good to see you tonight. Yeah. Well, I guarantee you, if you're reading what Chris has wrote, you 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 read it a couple of times. I mean, it's just, it's just I, you you'll have to read it a couple of times to get it all, but it's just amazing. Really. Give us a little insight on Shel Silverstein. He wrote one of my favorite books. Oh and, boy, uh, he wrote all my favorite books. Yeah, the Giving Tree just speaks to. I mean, it it just speaks across generations and generations. And how was that? That, that was during that time period, was it not? It was during that time period. Shel had the. Uh, he he was the child himself. He understood children. He knew what it was that they longed for, what they missed, what, what scared them, what made them happy. And he was able to just tap right into those beautiful things that, that a lot of children's book writers try to do. I try to do it, and I don't, I, I, I don't hold a candle to what Shel Silverstein does, or did. Uh, he, was, he was the master of it. You know, his his books have sold, you know, 40 and 50, 60 million copies. Right. Oh, God. So. And he uh, written more than a few good songs. He wrote A Boy Named Sue. Yeah. Uh, he wrote uh, Sylvia's Mother. Yeah. And, uh, That's old Doctor Who there, right? Doctor Who. Yes, sir. And the, and the great one, the cover of The Rolling Stone. Oh, well, he wrote that as well. That's great. He wrote most of... Uh, the uh, songs for Dr. Hook, didn't he? He wrote most of the songs for Dr. Hook. Dr. He Wayne did complete Earl. albums Yellow with Bobby Bear, complete albums with Jerry Reed. Uh, he was quite a guy. I love Shell. He was my good friend, and I miss him a lot. Very good. Curious, uh, play us another song, if you would. This is a song I wrote for Glenn Campbell in 1968. It's called Dreams of the Everyday Housewife. This is for Glenn. He's in Nashville in a facility. We'll do this for the Allen family, too. She looks in the mirror Stares at the wrinkles that weren't there yesterday. The face of the young man she almost married. What would he think if he saw her this way? She holds up her 
and little girl fashion Something comes in to her mind Slowly stops dancing, remembering her girlhood And all of the boys she had waiting in line Ah, such are the dreams of the everyday housewife You see everywhere, any time of the day like the everyday housewife who gave up the good life for me. The photograph album she takes from the closet slowly turns the page. Carefully picks up the crumbling flower, the last one he gave her now. She closes her eyes, touches the house dress that suddenly disappears. And just for the moment, she's wearing the gown that broke all their minds back so many years. Ah, such are the dreams of the everyday housewife you see everywhere. Any time of the day, like the everyday housewife, gave up the good life for me. Like the everyday housewife who gave up the good life for me. Just let that pass okay. without saying about that song. I heard, uh, I watched a show one time and Glenn was doing his show and he, sa he, he started to sing that song and he said, this is one of my favorite songs that I've recorded. Oh, nice. And he didn't say Chris Kentry though, because I knew it later on and I realized Chris Kentry wrote that song. And now what kind of award was, uh, did you get on that, Chris? I got BMI awards, I got Millionaire's awards, I got songwriter <coughs> Awards for it, and you know, they, it was all kind of awards good. for yeah. that show. Yeah. That song was a great song, and as uh, you just heard it, you, you very <coughs> seldom get to hear a number one song by a number one artist by the writer in person. So I was glad for that. Thank you, Jim. Thank you, Pete. Thank you, Pete. I think if you're of a certain generation. I don't think there's a single person that can't say that they don't uh, uh, enjoy Glenn Campbell and his music. And, uh, you know, he was a part of our growing up. I don't know about most people in this room. I'm maybe dating myself a bit. But uh, how is he to work with as a person? I mean, uh, you know, we know now that he's struggling in his personal life. He, uh, it's Alzheimer's, if I'm not mistaken. Well, I ran with him out in California. And, and Johnny Rodriguez was with us most of the time, so the three of us moved. <laughs> what was, can we was, say, yeah. right? Yeah, and, and Glenn fashioned himself at that time to be a preacher. He was very much into the Lord. He knew the Bible, and he, he could quote scriptures backwards and forwards. And he, was, he, was, he was kind of a wild man, and he was married to Tanya Tucker. Wasn't Tanya Tucker and Chris, uh, Chris uh, Christopherson in that bunch with you and Freddie Rabbit maybe too? Absolutely. Yeah. I knew that you were very close to Eddie Rabbit. Well, Eddie, Eddie was a, he was a, a beautiful guy, man. He was from New Jersey, and uh, he he lived on 17th Avenue South, and he just wrote songs day and night. He had a he had a monkey in the house named Jojo, and uh, Jojo was had a TV in his cage, and <laughs> it was a crazy time. Uh, <laughs> you feel like we're only getting about half of these stories. <laughs> I'll tell you what, it, it's all in the book. Okay. Yeah, we'll have, right? to get, we'll have to get the book. You know, it's it's the rest of the story. Yeah, absolutely. I think I'm going to have to have a copy of that book for sure. Grace, why don't you grace us with another song, if you would, my friend? Oh, boy.
This song, I don't know, man. I've been rehearsing it a little bit. And it gets to me. I don't know why. It's called Ramblin' Joe. But what it says in the song just makes me feel lonesome for a part of myself. I worry about a whole lot of stuff Whatever I do, it's never enough I'm living up to someone else's expectations I stumble on my words and fidget a lot Try not to measure myself by what another's got I wake in the night in a state of desperation only God can dig me out of this hole On a vertical cliff with nothing to hold on to In the freezing rain alone Ramblin' Joe has traveled too far And he just don't know how to find his way back home But ain't we all Ramblin' Joe? What we're doing here we don't know just one foot in front of the other is the rule of thumb But if you're lucky and true love lands Like jewels in both your hands Then you'll die rich, not dead, broke on Skid Row Ah, please, please come home, Rampin' Joe Well, I'm not religious and I'm not book smart I only know what's in my heart Why people kill one another, hey, what's that about? I get stoned on the sun and high on the sea What heaven and hell is, hell, don't ask me That kind of stuff's just too hard to figure out I've chased this dream for so damn long It ain't come true, but it's my song And I still sing it everywhere I roam Ramblin' Joe's traveled too far And he just don't know how to find his way back home But ain't we all Ramblin' Joe? What we're doing here we don't know just one foot in front of the other is the rule of thumb. But if you're lucky and true love lands, like jewels in both your hands, then you'll die rich, not dead, broke on Skid Row. sit down and enjoy this but uh, Chris says I'm standing up but as you can see with that guitar how in the world are you going to do that sitting down uh, I remember back a few years ago I was I, I was running a music store over here and uh, we had a music store and Chris came in and played everything that was hanging on the wall and finally ended up with this little Oscar Smith guitar you remember oh, that yeah. yeah he bought that little Oscar Smith guitar and done all kinds of stuff to it I mean you know to dress it up to get it all fixed up but uh, he just wore that thing out, you know, and I can take a $5,000 guitar and I can't get it to that out of it. So it's, a, it's, a, it's fun to see you pick that thing and do your stuff. This, is a, this guitar was made for me by Brent McElroy in Seattle. He's a great guitar builder. He built it for me. And uh, it's just a wonderful instrument. I saw my girl on your case. I knew that was, uh, that's what I meant. From the Oscar Smith, man, you're a giant step into the, the you know, clouds with that thing. Sounds great. I'd like to uh, let you all know that uh, Genevieve Allen is in the house. She's a, a, a country outlaw female singer that just got signed to a, a record label and got a publishing deal. She plays all over Texas. She's a rising star down there. She's on the way up. She's going to be a big contributor to country music. And uh, Could you wave your hand? 
Have a stand up, Tom. We let people see you. Check it out. Stranger here either. How long ago was it when you came here and played uh, on the radio show? But what, like two, three years ago. Two, three years ago. She's, uh, so, uh, so another star, guys. Just you know, just keep your eyes open, your ear to the wheel, and uh, you'll find her to the ground, and you'll end up doing this stuff. Are you, are you gonna, are you gonna do her a song? Or are you gonna? Oh, absolutely. And by the way, uh, Jimmy Reed set that whole thing up. He, he yeah. told Jimmy to get a hold of me. And, you want to hear her sing something? Yeah. Now, Genevieve, where, where are you based out of again? Come on up here. She's out in Fayetteville. Where are you in Fayetteville? Yeah, I originally from Texas, but now I'm, hey, that works just great. You know what that is? Credit card. That's a lot of credit card. It makes an awful good thing. It makes an awful good thing. <laughs> okay, Miss Genevieve, I'm glad she's here tonight. Well, thank you for getting me up here, and uh, y'all give Chris another round of applause. I have been uh, blessed and honored to get to rock with him, and I've learned so much from him. Uh, thanks to Jimmy, we uh, got in contact, what, about a year ago? About a year ago. About a year ago, started writing together, so uh, anyway, I'll shut up and play a song. Y'all like prison songs? Yeah. yeah. All right, good. I, uh, I got a whole bunch of mug shots in my, you know, wallet. <laughs> and, <laughs> anyway, this song is about prison. There's a place in Texas called El Campo. If you've been there, it's the flattest, hottest place on God's green earth. And I decided if I was going to put a prison somewhere, that would be where it would be. <laughs> And the pick left. <laughs> Thank you, I got my credit card back. <laughs> Let me try that again. <laughs>
again, you never know who's going to show up here at the Barbecue Caboose Cafe. Well, Chris? Yes, sir. Let's have another song, man. <clears throat> We're loving this. I, how about that crowd? Pretty good night so far? Yeah. We're at the halfway point, Chris. It's half time, but uh, let's keep rolling. This, is, this song is for anybody who wants to be Elvis. <laughs> <laughs> Who else saw the, the, the movie The Matrix? Anybody? Yeah, same. Oh, yeah. Put a little thing on your head and put plug a car in. in, and all of a sudden, you're plugged. It's called the Elvis Machine. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 